Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It really saved our marriage. We couldn't find a single activity we'd like to do together. He's so into his skeet shooting. Pull! And I love my yoga. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons always sounded like so much fun. But with that 20-sided die, I thought, oh, brother. And all those manuals. But that's where the book comes in. Aw, what a cute little store. <laughs> Everybody's staring at me. Don't worry, they're more scared of you than you are of them. Unlikely. So, um... If I tap both my red aces, can I summon a king, or can I only bring a jack out? everything now and uh and, uh, and it was very much the case it's like the, the the closet trekkies and you know the really diehard star wars fans are now you know the people in the higher positions or, or that's the person sitting next to you that is completely out in the open about what they enjoy and uh, it's just that there's much more acceptance now for that uh, than there ever has been in the past i think it is a community i think it's uh, a group of people with similar interests that come to one another's defense in a lot of ways uh, Sci-fi and fantasy are somewhat synonymous, and if you're into one, you're generally into the other, but generally the two go hand in hand, and you can almost always find someone with a similar interest. We've, we've come out into the light, and we're, we're an accepted, if not, uh, maybe not accepted, but at least recognized group now. It's no longer a, a thing where you hide out in the classroom during lunch hour and play by yourselves. We can be out in the library or the courtyard now. <laughs> They're nerds. They don't get out a lot. They're lonely, sad, da -da -da -da, whatever. Uh, I've gotten it all. Um, I mean, I read comic books and I have a girlfriend. I have a, just got a job, actually. You know, um, they kind of, you know, they do the, they have the stereotype of the, you know, huge sunglasses, bow tie, standard thing. Um, childish, I get that a lot. I disagree to most of it. Um, but really, fans that I know of, they're all from all ways of life. They're all different types of people. So do you think comic books, sci-fi, gaming, and everything is part of a community? I think, that, yeah, I believe there is a combo community, and I'm proud to be part of it. I love it. Okay. So you think somebody could go to a strange city and go to a comic book and feel totally at I've home? I've been to a comic book shop in London and felt at home. The way things seem to be now is um, people who, who are geeks or nerds are actually um, cooler. Um, people want to be in uh, and... and the geek culture is an in thing right now. Something I've noticed is people love to come in here and they love to talk about comics. Uh, we don't do any gaming, but people will come in and they can spend a lot of time here just talking about comics, what's out right now, a lot of what's coming out in the future. They like to speculate on what's going to happen. And, and they just want someone to talk to. So um, I'd say a, a lot of my time is talking to people, fostering a community. How excited are you about Captain America? Oh, very, dude. Thomas Jackson busted open the uh, Captain America art book earlier today. And we were like three or four pages in. We were like hopping up and down. Going, Holy shit, it's Captain America. I didn't know how excited I was until Thomas got me into it, man. And I cannot wait to see this thing tonight. So how did you get away from the Astro Plane Thor to get here tonight? What we have here are the flyers. Before. We do leaflets, man. Yeah. We fly the hell out of these uh, these movie premieres. We did Harry Potter last week and uh, Transformers 3. 
I mean, if it's, if it's a big movie, we put those out. Get into it. Uh, my name is John Grigsby. I am the game director, game operations director for Coastcon Incorporated. Uh, I started playing games, uh, role-playing games, back in 1979. A friend of mine got the basic set at that time, and he asked me to referee the game to be the dungeon master. And that got me started, and since then I have been a dungeon master. What kind of subgroups or subgenres do you think there are in fandom or fantasy communities? You've got the gamers, you've got the card floppers, those are the people who enjoy magic, uh, Yu Gi Oh! Pokemon, stuff like that. You've got the fans who just want to view the movies and read the books, they're not interested in playing games. And then you've got the cosplayers, the ones who dress up in costume, come to the conventions and show off their new skills, and uh, film themselves on YouTube with broom handles. Uh, lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Sleep! Lightning bolt! What kind of stereotypes have you think existed in the 80s and the 90s about gamers and D&D &D and such? Nerds. I heard a lot of commentary. Uh, you have to be smart to play that game. Uh, you have to be into science fiction and fantasy novels to play that game. I had a good friend. Uh, it took me years to get him involved. Uh, I would sit at school and read my game books and he would come by every day and make a comment about them until I finally got him to try. I'm Justin Adcock. I'm the owner of Comics and Stuff. It's a comic shop in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I started reading when I was about three or four. Uh, I can remember uh, pretty clearly picking up an issue of Godzilla off the spinner rack at a local gas station in Purvis, a small town that I'm from. And uh, I didn't start collecting then, but I was definitely interested. And I've always drawn, uh, you know, been an artist. And uh, that, that also sort of led me back into it. Uh, I became a collector when I was about 9 or 10. Stuck with it until the early 90s. The 90s were kind of awful, so I got out for a long time. and Got back into it and then got this job, and, and now I'm, you know. How long have you been here? Uh, this is our 10th year of business at, uh, at this location. Okay. In the last 10 years, have you seen a surge in, in people who, who collect comics or has it stayed about the same? Have you seen different types of people who like the stuff? I think it's picked up since the first few years. I think we hit a peak around Civil War, which I want to say was, what, about 05, 06, somewhere in there. Uh, there was a real, uh, a very obvious uh, increase in, uh, in, in business and orders. Um, but then that we kind of have to weigh that against Katrina as well, because uh, in, the, in the two years after Katrina, those were our best two years because the, the comic shops south of us had gotten wiped out. So we had this huge influx of people from uh, you know, Louisiana, uh, even from Alabama, and especially from South Mississippi. So that might have had something to do with it, but I just I can recall during those couple of years that um, uh, just ordering a higher volume of book than, than, than at present. Do you think the big budget films like Wolverine, X-Men, Green Lantern, Thor, Captain America, have, and you know, the Avengers coming up next year have a, something to do with it? Man, I, they've definitely increased awareness but I, I don't really see sales increasing for major properties. Um, the movies that have brought the most people into my store over the last 10 years are independent films that are lesser known. Uh, Sin City, Hellboy, Watchmen, even though it's published by DC, is not, as, uh, is not a really you know, uh, internationally recognized property. Um, those uh, bring people in because it seems interesting and they're curious about it. Whereas with you know, Batman, um, uh, the sales may see a slight bump because DC is putting out additional Batman merchandise, but I don't see new people coming and going, hey, I saw Dark Knight, I gotta get that comic. I, I don't think that happened a single time. But then with the smaller properties, uh, they do very well, uh, very well with bringing people uh, through those doors. I think the, the fact that most comic shops are independently owned and, uh, and they're not, you know, it's not like walking to Walmart where you see familiar signage or people wearing, you know, an outfit that you've seen a hundred times. Uh, or even products that you're really familiar with. When you walk into a comic shop, it's almost like you're walking into someone's like personal space, um, and that can be a, a good, you know, or bad thing depending on how it's handled. 
Uh, but around here, I mean, you know, we try to make it you know, as inviting, as welcoming as possible. And, uh, you know, it, it helps if you have someone behind the counter that is, uh, you know, outgoing, you know, and friendly, as opposed to someone who's trying to figure out why you're bothering them at this hour of the day. <laughs> so, you know. uh, my name is Barry Herring, and I'm the owner and manager of Southern Fried Comics. Um, I enjoy comic books, um, and what got me into comics uh, is my parents owned a grocery store, and when I was a kid I would just read the comics off the spinner rack. So I would spend all day just reading comics. So that's, uh, that's where I got it. Well, so my name is Matthew Lord, and I've been into gaming, comics, and all things nerdy. That's my life, actually. I mean, I'm 21 now. Uh, I, First thing I ever remember reading was uh, Garfield comic strips, and uh, once the Spider-Man movie came out when I was a little kid, I remember rushing to the theaters to see that, and I've been reading comic books straight on for about three, maybe four years now, since uh, high school, I really got into them. Uh, I'm Sonny, uh, this is uh, my store, Jax, we've been in business since uh, 1992. Um, we sell mainly gaming products, uh, board games, card games, miniature games, uh, comic books. Uh, we have a gaming area, about 1,600 square feet that people come and play uh, at their leisure. And we have a uh, you know, display area that, that sells most of the products that they're going to use to play with. The store was already open when I took over. Um, I helped uh, a fellow named Jim Whitaker back in 1992. He had mainly sports cards and um, sports memorabilia. In about 93, this game came out called uh, Magic the Gathering. And when it first came out, you know, I was kind of hesitant about playing it. Um, I, I collected Marvel cards and DC cards, the actual collectible cards, but not the gaming cards. So when these came out, I just collected them for the, uh, the art, really. And after a while, I had to play them to you know, understand why people collected them. And after that, it kind of snowballed and became uh, one of the primary sellers of the store, even when Jim still ran it. I took over the business in 96 and started running it since then. Oh, seems like a nice guy. You mean for someone who's into comic books? No, 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 I just meant for... yeah. <laughs> I mean, just because people appreciate comic books doesn't make them weirdos. Stuart's a terrific artist. He went to the Rhode Island School of Design. Okay, what about the guy over there in the superhero t-shirt tucked into his sweatpants? Ah, uh, yeah, that's Captain Sweatpants. He doesn't really help the point I'm trying to make. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Well, everybody has stereotypes, but, uh, you're right, most of the, uh, you know, stereotypes would be that the gamers are, are geeks or 40-year-old virgins or something of that nature, but, um, we have a broad spectrum here. You really can't tell. I mean, we have our kids as young as six and seven years old collecting comic books, and guys uh, as old as 60s and 70s playing Magic the Gathering or Warhammer 40K. So, really, anything between you, you'll see here. My name is Stephen Barrington. I am the owner of Flea Market Comics, and I've been involved with selling comics since I was in, in high school. Well, I've been in the comics virtually all my life since I was even old enough to pick up a comic and look at the pictures. That was because my uh, father would buy them each week for the family. I come from a big family, uh, 11 brothers and sisters. And to keep, keep us occupied during a uh, grocery shopping day, which was on Thursday, my father would buy uh, about five of them. And we'd uh, pass them around, and read them and such, and then when I got a little bit older, I started reading them and really enjoyed them. And it helped me want to read and learn how to read. And it just became, well, gee, if we're going to have them, I'm just going to start keeping them. And so that's what happened with me. Five. Oh, great. <laughs> so you got an arrow right in your chest, and you're out 10 million. Oh, no. Don't worry about it, Mike. I got resurrection. I'll bring you back. I'm already one of the undead, Greg. I can still throw death spells, huh, Steve? I'm just trying to help yeah. you out, man. Don't be so cranky. How about throwing a spell over the pizza man? Where's that pizza man? Get it, huh? Well, I'm ready to play now you're a thief. to play. I'm ready to play That's now, you guys. We're in the middle, Elliot. Can't you join any universe in the middle? I got him. I got him. Mm. Yeah, what am I talking about? Papa Umau. Papa Umau. Okay, tell me, Luna, I'm out. Yeah. Mike? 
I know it's not for us, it's for his mother. Mike. Papa Uma You have Mama. to ask Steve, he's game master. Papa he has Uma absolute Mama. power. Steve! Thanks Steve, a lot. can I uh, play bye. now? Go away for the pizza first. Then I'm in. Yeah, you're in. Figure out your strategy because you're playing after Greg. There's plenty of sausage and pepperonis. Everything but the little fishies. <laughs>